Hey, do you want to hear about one powerful ass business strategy? Then if you're on the website, you already know it's guarantees, risk reversals, and referrals. Now we're calling it one strategy because we're talking about the combination of these three strategies used together. Call it a triad, trifecta, whatever. Each one used by itself is worthy of recognition. It's just that the combination of the three creates the synergy that will allow you to just blow the fucking lid off the combination or whatever analogy you want to use. Think of this like a triangle. Architects uh, consider the triangle the strongest shape. Their triangles are capable of holding the shape, having a strong base, and providing immense support. So, out of these three sides, you have guarantees, risk reversals, referrals. Now, before you blindly take my word about this or anything else, test it. Because at the end of the day, this is the only way you're going to be able to validate anything. And remember, the only opinion that matters is that of the paying client. Let's think this through for a minute, though. When you're communicating with your clients and prospects, let's, better yet, let's just pretend that I'm your prospect. Now, whatever it is you're selling, if you can guarantee it, if you can make that guarantee... Basically, if you can guarantee my results before I buy it and ensure that I get the pleasure I'm seeking, then reduce all my risk in the transaction so that I know I'm going to get what I paid for and don't, and that I don't feel like I'm gambling my money away. And if my circumstances change, I know there will be some type of resolve. Basically, if you remove all the fear from the transaction, and honestly, that's what I look for every time I spend any amount of money. So, then, after I buy your product or service, after I'm happy with it, after you eliminate any buyer's remorse I might have, you then program me to tell my friends about it who are in the market for the very product you're offering. You basically have me, your happy client, referring other people to you. Well then, I would hope that you, all that, Provided, I would hope that you would be able to sell the shit out of your product for greater impact and less cost than any other tactic you're employing right now. Because guarantees, risk reversals, and referrals do not cost you anything. Uh, all you'd be doing is setting it up so people enjoy doing business with you. Compare this to any other ad spend you've got going. Um, if you want to hear how I came across this strategy, just stick around. First, though, I'm wondering, when we say risk reversal, what does this mean to you? Pardon the plane. So for the risk reversal, when any two parties come together to do business, conduct commerce, make love, or complete any type of transaction, one side is always asking the other side to assume all or nearly all the risk. And what you're doing is asking people to depart with their hard-earned money. So, to the degree that you can reduce this risk for the other side, for your prospect, for your client, you lower the possibility and eliminate the barrier, restriction, or objection that keeps them from doing business with you. To illustrate, I'm borrowing a story that uh, Jay Abraham shares, and I hope he doesn't mind. Basically, a man wanted to buy a pony for his 10-year-old daughter. Now, there were two ponies for sale in his city. He went to the first pony's owner and said he'd like to buy the pony. The man responded, sure. Pay me for the pony, take it home, and if you don't like it, bring it back in a day or two and I'll give you all your money back. The gentleman who wanted the pony for his daughter considered this and thought, not bad. Nonetheless, he visited the other gentleman. This fellow with the second pony responded very differently. He said the following, My pony is kind and gentle and loving and is extremely good with children your daughter's age. But of course, I would say that that, I would say that it's my pony and I'm trying to sell it. I like to suggest the following, Let me bring my pony to your home. Put the pony in your stable. Let me bring you a month's supply of oats and hay. Let me send my groom to your stable every day and make sure there's no mess. Allow your daughter to ride the pony as if it were hers for the entire month. 
At the end of the month, I'll come to your home, and one of two things will occur. Either the pony and your daughter will fall in love with you, with each other, and you'll see that every word I've uttered is the truth. And if that's the case, I'll ask you to pay me for the pony. Or, for whatever reason, if the two of them do not get along, I'll gladly take the pony back, clean out the stable for you, and there'll be no obligation on your part whatsoever. All you really have to do is put yourself in the shoes of your client or prospect. Instead of figuratively sitting behind the cash register, if you put yourself on the other side of the counter, look at the transaction from their perspective. So, we have risk reversal. And now we have better than risk reversal, which is limited only by your, your, by your imagination. Uh, to help illustrate this, I've got to share another Jay Abraham story. Uh, when he was helping sell precious metals. Basically, when trying to sell gold bricks to complete strangers, Jay reasoned that you first want to establish trust, trust and initiate a buying relationship. So they offered two Morgan Silver dollars for slightly less than wholesale cost. The essence of the better than risk-free offer, it basically said, Buy the two coins for $19. Then we'll send you a few books and the transcripts of interviews where we paid top experts in the industry to share their thoughts about investing in precious metals, rare coins, and whatever other thing they had in their portfolio. So we've included two proponents for the investment, they were saying. <clears throat> we've included proponents for the investment and advocates against the investment because we want you to have a balanced opinion. All we ask is that you read this one chapter, blah, blah, blah. And then after 30 days, if you decide you don't want to keep the coins, return them to us in the envelope provided. You keep all the books, and we'll give you $21 instead of the 19 that you paid. Because frankly, if you never do business with us again, we want you to be able to say that the one investment you did make with us, you made a profit. <clears throat> Look. I know this may take a leap of faith. You can also double their money back, but I, if this takes a leap of faith, trust, and confidence in people, so be it. Just test this out for yourself. And even if you do double their money back, all evidence points to the fact that there's so many more honest people in our world than there are cro crooks, cons, and cheapstakes. The number of people who take advantage of your generosity by ripping you off for this mere $2 it's minuscule, negligible, not even the point of contention compared to the increase in sales you would receive by initiating a base level of trust with potential lifelong clients. If you have to, set aside your bruised ego for a minute and focus on the increase in revenue. Now, let's talk about guarantees. <clears throat> the epitome of a bad Example that drives me bonkers is the seal looking emblem that says satisfaction guaranteed written in fancy font inside a pretty little border without any mention whatsoever to anything else. I figure this uh, pretty little picture ain't fooling nobody. Basically a guarantee is a promise that something will be performed in a certain manner or an item will fulfill certain expectations. So what are those expectations? In the case above, how do you define satisfaction? If you don't, maybe you should. Future pace, dimensionalize, demonstrate through the five senses how the prospect's life will change for the better, describing in detail all the benefits, advantages, wonderful life-changing experiences your prospect has already received in his or her mind as they imagine life now a little more fulfilled having already purchased your product. How do you guarantee, illustrate, your prospect will receive the results you deliver, you promise to deliver, deliver by such and such a time? Now, word of caution, though, so I was writing this, you know, if you're in the uh, medicinal or pharmaceutical industry, I don't want to make any specific promise. Instead, I just speak in generalities um, and share a success story type of testimonial as proof of effectiveness rather than make a specific claim because if that claim goes unfulfilled, all losses trust. Uh, but in general, I do suggest uh, spell out your promises, being specific, defining certain words, concepts, and ideas. And also, if your product is flawed, that's okay. Uh, just bring that to your uh, prospect's attention. 
Anytime anyone buys anything, all they want to know is what to expect. That's it. It is their buying decision to make, not yours. It's your job, though, to set that expectation, to meet that expectation, and if you're smart about it, to exceed that expectation. Uh, so basically, how are you going to exceed your client's expectations? How are you addressing all their pain points? Do you have a forever warranty displayed? Do you offer unconditional returns? A try before you buy? A bonus refunds? And what if your product breaks down? What if your service starts to wane? What if a newer, related, superior product comes along? What if your product doesn't last a lifetime or doesn't measure up? What if the client wants to back out of the purchasing agreement? Do they have an easy out or are you going to stick it to them? Do they have to worry about this? <clears throat> because you know it's in the back of their mind whether they voice it or not. All of the factors equal, the best guarantee wins. So, do you mention your guarantee up front or do you keep it a secret, burying it somewhere in the middle of the page in fine print? First impressions last forever. So if you need an example of a guarantee, let's go with Zappos, the online women's uh, shoe store. Now, during their startup phase, no one in their right mind ever pictured a lady wanting to buy a pair of shoes outside of the typical shopping event of trying them on with friends with the immediate gratification of the retail experience. However, they had, and they still have, a very, very powerful guarantee and return policy. You can go to their website and see for yourself. It's no coincidence that they went, in, went on to sell their business for $1.2 billion, with a B, dollars. Obviously, there's more to Zappos than just the simple guarantee, but, with their, but without their guarantee, there would be no Zappos today. Look. If you want to separate yourself and your business from everyone else, do more for the client than what anyone else is willing to do. There really is no degree to the extent that you can go to the... Uh, there really is no degree to the extent you can go with this about pleasing your clients and customers. And on the final note, with guarantees, I want to show, share uh, Joe Sugarman's idea of what he called a satisfaction conviction. Uh, which is more than a trial period, basically conveys a message to you, from you to your prospect that says, hey, I am so convinced that you will like this product that I'm going to do something for you, for your benefit, to prove how incredible, how incredible my offer is. If your potential customer, after reading what you are going to do, says they must really believe in their product, how can they do this? Are they going to get ripped off by customers who would take advantage of their generosity? Then you know you have a great example of a satisfaction conviction. Now Sugarman says that your response rate can double as long as you use a satisfaction conviction that makes sense for the offer. Alright, so far we have risk reversals and guarantees. Now our third element is a referral generating system. Now, I'm not going to say too much about this because uh, Jay Abraham has a product out there that will teach you everything you need to know about getting referrals consistently, systematically, with ease, at a price point unparalleled to any other. Now, nobody ever talks about a mediocre product. However, if someone loves your product or they absolutely hate it, you can guarantee that at some point your product is going to come up in conversation. So let's say... Let's say I buy your product and it exceeds my expectations. The reason I'm going to tell my friends about it has nothing to do with you. I want to be the friend, I want to be the hero to my friends. So if I've gotten so much value, benefit, result, fulfillment out of doing business with you, because I like my friends and I want their lives to be enriched, just as mine was after buying your product, I'll be telling them all about your business because I don't want them to get burned by working with somebody else whose standards may not be up to your level. Now, I'm naturally going to advise my friends how people love to gossip, so if you make an impression, it's going to get talked about. Now, we can do, now, we can do nothing and allow that conversation, their conversation, to just generically evolve, or we can be strategic about it. 
uh, maybe suggest a couple ways after you've proven your worth when the topic does come up to guide that conversation to a happy resolve for all parties involved and listen I'm not here to sell you about re sell you on referrals nor is this a time to, or place to cover all the nuances details how to's and... but look the truth is a referral generated buyer purchases quicker negotiates less buys more things buys more often lasts longer and they re refer more quality buyers none of which cost you a penny they are worth so much more in terms of lifetime value than the random prospect who you're trying to establish trust with so this begs the question do I have in place right now at least one formalized, systematized, continuously adhered to referral generating strategy that you do all the time to all of your new clients? That you do with certain key intervals or inflection points in the buying process to existing clients? Do you have at least one system? Do you have two? Do you have five? Ten? And why not? Let me share a referral story, a famous example, and this is one of the more bold illustrations of the 150 or so techniques out there that you can easily use. Um, and this took place a few years ago. The guy's name is Patty Lund. At the time, he was an Australian dentist who was working 60 hours a week, making the equivalent of $45,000 a year. Now, he put one referral strategy in place, and within a couple years, he was working 23 hours a week, making $400,000 a year. And to top it off, he was happy. He was enjoying the process. Originally, he was frustrated, and it got to the point he closed his doors, remodeled the office, fired his difficult patients, eh, he referred them out, and sat down with his favorite clients and asked them for referrals. This was kind of scary and awkward, but eventually, when he got more refined, he would sit down with the new client and say, hey, before you can become a client of mine, we have this little bargain. I want to run this past you. One part of the bargain is that I owe you an awful lot of things because you've decided to become a client of mine. And the other part of it is that you've become a client of mine, you owe me some things. And one of those things that you owe me is to refer me to people of comparable quality to yourself. I require that you do this before you can join the practice. Now, when he first did this, yeah, it was a little scary. I was thinking it might get 50% and that would be just fine. But truth is, the most common response he found was, can I only refer to people? So Patty's referral strategy was hardcore. So he had to make it a point and basically, yeah, I mean, so he had to make it a point to destroy their concepts, the prospect client's concepts of what it was, of what it means to go to the dentist. Whenever, I made the point that whenever we run a business, we tend to copy the other people in the same industry, kind of do the same things everybody else is doing. Uh, there's no reason for this, though. Matter of fact, it's kind of ill-advised. Um, so he decided to uh, destroy people's paradigms by changing the way he did business. He even renamed his practice to Patrick Long Dental Happiness. Now one of the things he did, and this was a bold move if you think about it, was lock the front door so that people could not get in. There was a little sign he put on the door that said, thank you for calling, we're inside, but we can't do much for you unless you've been referred by somebody who's already a client of ours. So if you've been referred or you're a client of ours, please ring the bell. Otherwise, if you have a major problem, we'll try to find somebody who will help you, but we will not help you. Interestingly enough, he said, if you position yourself to be exclusive, people tend to want it. It's weird, it's scary, but if you do not revere yourself, nobody will. And when you do, you have to do it with finesse, with education. You have to do it nurturously. They cannot respect you if you do not give them a basis for it. And there are so many diverse ways to generate referrals, but again, this is just one example. Others are wildly different. Ah, so, 
this one strategy, the combination of guarantees, risk reversals, and referrals is one I recommend. And earlier I said I'd share how I came to learn about it, so here goes. I am a raving fan of Jay Abraham. He was the first money occupation business guy that really struck a chord with me. And my name's Parker. I'm an introverted bimodal sofa file hooked on marketing been struggling all my life working dead-end jobs, which is why I studied the hell out of marketing, which is what Peter Drucker considers the one true purpose of every business. Uh, basically, that just means I think differently from most people in two totally opposite, diametrically opposed ways. And the only time I'm happy, basically when I get my, where I get my energy, is when I'm learning and creating, doing something productive. I've not found this outlet out in the workforce, so I've been searching and searching, striving for independence in an interdependent world, learning everything I can, hoping for freedom before it's all over, always feeling like I'm about 20 books shy of a major breakthrough, I only find some wildly new direction to travel in. Basically, I used to study everything business-related sporadically until I heard Joe Polish say it would be better to study the life work of one expert in the field rather than the whole body of knowledge and topic from a bunch of different people. So I zeroed in on Jay Abraham and I've spent hours and hours, years really, reading his books, listening to his audios, podcasts, everything. His library is tremendous. Uh, now I can't resource, resource it to verify specifically when or where I heard this, but I remember when I did hear it, writing it down enthusiastically like I just struck gold. Now, that wickedly profound bit of vortex changing wisdom that I learned buried deep in the thousands and thousands of hours of Abraham insight was the amalgamation of strategies I've just shared with you about guarantees, risk reversals, and referrals. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it works for you. I hope it was clearly articulated. I hope you don't mind this simple video production. I hope it transforms your life. I hope it benefits you, your clients, your prospects. I hope it inspires you and I to step up our games. I hope it makes a difference, has a positive impact, and leads to bigger and better things. And if this strategy does nothing for you, if you're not there already, I have a website full of other ideas, links, strategies, insights, you name it. All you have to do is visit InnovativeMarketingStrategies.com. If that's too much, you can just key in IMS321.com. Thank you.